So Irene, I'm uh, going to um, answer your question a little more detail um, uh, to start things off. Last time you yeah. asked if there was any inherent um, uh, meaning in the number uh, 52. And I, I, I went through a really uh, complicated, well, racking my brain trying to figure it out, but I've got a simpler explanation. Um, I think maybe you've seen it, but- No, uh, this is I, great, thank you. I want to, uh, to start with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the night, uh, the sky and what uh, ancients could see. The, obviously they could see the moon, the sun, the Venus, Venus and Mars and three other planets. So uh, uh, there were five planets that uh, appeared to wander through the night uh, sky. Uh, they were called uh, wandering uh, planets. Obviously, they're not pl the planets as we know them today. They could only see uh, uh, five. Uh, so that gives us to the inherent meaning of the number seven, okay? To get to 52, we've got to uh, get to seven. And I, my best guess is here are the, the uh, seven um, objects can be seen uh, in the sky. So Mercury, Venus, the moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, of course, uh, the, the sun. And uh, they were called, the uh, uh, those seven were called, uh, the, the five wandering planets were called the classical uh, planets or the heavenly celestial and even sacred um, uh, planets, not, not, not the full range of planets we know today. So how uh, it, it makes certain sense that you keep track of um, uh, 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 days and divide them into week, uh, a week, and maybe you use the number seven based on uh, name each day of the week after what you're seeing in the uh, sky day and night. Um, and so the clincher for me is, Oh, and look what happens when you divide oh. seven into 364. So they're also keeping track of, uh, of the way the sky looks. And when it uh, starts looking the same way it looked 364 days ago, that, that, that number means something. So over the uh, uh, centuries, uh, 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 astronomers came up with, with that number and that's that's how we got uh, 50, 52. Uh, Yay, John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for the question. But uh, uh, one more thing. So the Gregorian, uh, uh, our Gregorian cal calendar, the four seasons, but, but what are the four seasons? They're really two solstices and two equinoxes. Uh, so we're dealing with four. And the Chinese divide the seasons in, in uh, the four seasons in a, a very uh, different way, but 13. So if, if you're looking, uh, because you've got these four seasons, how many weeks in a season it's 13? And that was where I thought, well, huh, maybe uh, the Mayan God started with the number 13, but now I've tumbled that, no, I bet that, I bet they derived that. And it might've been even uh, uh, the lunar months that uh, uh, contributed that. So uh, that's, uh, uh, and then once they had the number 52, then they came up with this elaborate uh, uh, calendar. Um, that we talked about the briefly uh, last last time, but this is working back. I bet that they had 52 in mind and, and they set their mathematicians working on all these uh, three different uh, cycles and they came up with uh, uh, their calendar round, which is 52 uh, years. And anyway, it's all just speculation, but uh, Occam's razor, you, you look for the simplest and for me, the simplest is uh, 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 the num starting with the number seven and, and then 364 and 
that uh, and, and not looking at all this craziness. So enough, as Ramsey says. So now I'm just going to get you back and tell the end of the uh, uh, Aztec meets uh, Spaniard uh, story. You'll recall that um, Cortez had the good fortune to pick up a shipwrecked uh, a sailor and Cozumel who'd been uh, a slave uh, with the Mayans for eight years. You'll remember that his buddy, uh, the, only, the only two survivors out of 18 who pitched up on the shore, uh, and they were saved because they were captured. His buddy uh, went native, uh, but, but he was a priest and he, he was sure glad to see Cortez. And so Cortez freed uh, him and he could speak Mayan. Then they went to a village uh, uh, and ra basically raided a Mayan um, coastal town, and they had a Aztec slave who um, had learned to speak Mayan. So you have two people from different cultures who've learned to speak uh, Mayan. Her name is uh, Malenche. And so they communicated in this uh, elaborate game of telephone. Um, and uh, uh, Cortez indirectly could uh, communicate uh, with the Aztec hierarchy. Um, you, you remember um, uh, the, the statue uh, that they had of uh, Cortez in Mexico City with Malenche. And uh, th this is really Mestizo number two, right? I, I told you the story how we encountered Mestizo number one on the beaches of Acumal. Um, and that is uh, not a popular thing. Cortez is not a, a, a popular heroic George Washington figure. So uh, that, that uh, second mestizo uh, mysteriously disappeared. And Cortez is usually uh, pictured less uh, heroically, uh, certainly by the muralists. Uh, so back to the beaches of Veracruz, Cortez has landed. Uh, he's met the local uh, Indians and uh, Native Americans. And um, they, uh, he picks up through his uh, communication system that they really don't like the Aztecs very much. So you'll remember that Cortez left Cuba without approval. Uh, he'd assembled all his supplies and ships, and at the last minute, his, his boss said, no, I'm canceling. And so all this time, he's, he's uh, been a, a, a criminal. Um, and he gets to Veracruz, and he hears that there's a big empire uh, in, in, in uh, the inside uh, of um, uh, Mexico, um, and maybe a lot of gold, uh, he's being told. And so he decides, uh, huh, I'm going to uh, go for all or nothing. I'm going to say that this uh, mission, which is, was illegal, is canceled. So there's some limit on what he's going to be charged with. He's no longer a Cadillo. He has set up a new um, uh, ad administrative uh, governance. Uh, and so he is uh, now the captain of his majesty's ar army, self-appointed. He, uh, he was trained as a lawyer. So he's playing that, that, that game and building up his legal case. He knows if he loses, he'll be dead. But if he wins and it's as good as uh, uh, his informants uh, say, uh, and he actually prevails, he's going to be a hero. So it won't, this, this uh, uh, misdemeanor won't count for much. And he's pretty confident he's got uh, weapons, uh, the crossbow. He, he's got um, a, a way of uh, using the flintlocks to stabilize and have some accuracy. He's got dogs. Aztecs have never effaced uh, 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 army dogs. Um, he's, of course, got uh, cannon um, that make a, a big noise. He's got gunpowder uh, from China, and uh, the, uh, the New World doesn't. Uh, and he's got horses. The horses are very impressive. 
Um, and the elite figure out that the rider and the horse are, are, are two separate beings, but uh, the foot soldier often think that they're one monster uh, that they're facing. Uh, but as ace in the hole really is uh, intelligence. Um, uh, and his men uh, say, what? We're go we're I we want to go back to Cuba. Uh, please, we don't want any more adventure. We've been away long enough. So what does Cortez do? He burns his boats. And he says the next day, sorry, guys, this uh, we're we're in it for the long run here or there there's no possibility of uh, quickly going back to cuba uh, on we go and so the 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 ruined boats uh, lay in in the in the harbor um his first uh uh stop with his new friends uh, the native americans who hate the aztecs is this great pyramid of uh, cholula and uh, uh, the, this uh, a pyramid uh, is mentioned in the Guinness Book of Records as the largest monument ever constructed. I couldn't believe it, but I double checked it. So this was, uh, we had talked earlier about the uh, Teotihuacanos and, and the Toltecs, their um, descendants, uh, cultures also uh, built uh, pyramids, um, and, and this was uh, one of the grandest. So he goes into this city, and this is not, not as big as uh, uh, Mexico City, uh, as Tenochtitlan, and so this is his uh, practice uh, uh, triumph conquest uh, using his new friends. Uh, he finally gets to uh, the lake on which uh, Tenochtitlan, the island of Tenochtitlan uh, sits, the city-state, uh, the head of the, an empire, really. Um, and um, uh, Montezuma agrees to at least meet him on the bridge. So they meet on, on, on the bridge. Um, and... Uh, uh, Montezuma has been hearing rumors of rebellion um, among uh, the, the people from whom he's been collecting uh, tribute. So he decides to be diplomatic. Um, and maybe he, uh, uh, he didn't have a choice, but he invites uh, Cortez to come on in uh, uh, to, to the city. They're in the city. Um, and both Montezuma and Cortez are distracted because they have other problems. Montezuma, of course, is worried about all these Native Americans who seem to be siding with Cortez, but Cortez has also uh, heard that um, a fleet of ships from Cuba have arrived to arrest him. They think he's still just sitting there on, on the shore. Um, and uh, they arrive to uh, 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 arrest him. And he gets word of this while he's in Montezuma's uh, palace. Um, and in Montezuma's palace, um, he uh, uh, decides that he's got to go and uh, fend off the uh, next uh, uh, group of people who are after him. Um, and so he leaves and he takes a force, half the men with him to confront uh, the people that are going to come and arrest him and sabotage his, his operation. He leaves half of the men um, in uh, enjoying Montezuma's hospitality. Um, but during that time away, um, the uh, man they left in charge, Alvarado, um, the, he misinterprets a festival, uh, apparently, that uh, uh, the Aztecs are having, and he thinks it's a, a preparation for attacking them. So he takes a, a preemptive action. After months of mutual trust, uh, hospitality, he attacks. And, and uh, Montezuma looks on as some of his leading warriors are, are uh, 
preemptively uh, uh, attacked. Uh, obviously, this sets a, a bad tone. Cortez has to fight his way back into the city. He doesn't know what's happened. And he gets there, and the, the, the Aztecs are, are restless. He fights his way back into the city. Um, and he's there with uh, uh, Montezuma, and Montezuma plays his trump card. Um, he's still got his priests, and he decides to put on a display of their religion and um, uh, sacrifice a human being and show Cortez uh, the beating heart. Uh, this does not go down well. Um, and needless to say, um, the priests, every, all the conquistadors are horrified, and that's that. Uh, the priest holds up the, uh, the cross to, to Montezuma, um, and uh, 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 the whole full-blooded, uh, the full-out war is, is on. Uh, and uh, at one point, uh, uh, Cortez uh, forces Montezuma to go and talk to his people and try to get them to lay down their, their arms. Um, and he does, and he stands on the parapet and his own people start throwing stuff at him. Uh, and Montezuma dies. Now, was he definitely killed by his own people or was he in fact dispatched um, by the Spaniards? Uh, in, in hope of uh, 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 discouraging all his followers. Um, now the problem in, is he's got to get out. So in the middle of the night, uh, they've taken down all the causeways. So in the middle of the night, Cortez builds a causeway to this little island. Um, but uh, the, the Aztecs find out about it and launch all these boats, uh, and in La Noche Triste, the night of sorrows, um, the, uh, half the, he loses half of, of the Spaniards on that uh, causeway that he's built. Um, so uh, there's a famous tree where Cortez is said to uh, have gone to lament the terrible loss of half his men. Um, he's sitting there. The one good news is uh, that he has uh, convinced the people uh, from Cuba who came to arrest him to join him. Uh, he, uh, that was not an easy negotiation and he had to dispatch uh, some of their leaders. Uh, but here he is and he gathers together all his uh, new Indian allies and they mount a siege around Tenochtitlan. So now the Aztecs are on uh, th their island and um, they're, they're uh, running low on, on food. Um, and at one point they decided time's right and they uh, attack. Uh, and, and there is a, a, an epic uh, battle. Uh, uh, guns and steel um, uh, take the day, but there's one more. Uh, uh, actor at work, and that's germs. So guns, germs, and steel, uh, smallpox. Um, when you, uh, you've had months and months of communication, um, and you ha you've had uh, Spanish soldiers living and enjoying hospitality on the island, um, it was only a matter of time before a ca some carrier of, 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 of smallpox um, uh, had enough of contact with uh, an, uh, an Aztec to cause an epidemic. Um, his main um, uh, accomplices um, helped him and helped him um, organize and, and even mount a, a functioning administration. Um, this is what now stands uh, where uh, Tenochtitlan stood. The whole lake has been filled in except for one small tourist area called uh, Xochimilco. Uh, and they built a castle. Um, 
Uh, and now I just want to take a brief pause and talk about human sacrifice, uh, because that is what uh, hardened uh, Cortez's men and, and just, hey, we're, we're not going to be able to recover here. This is too much. Um, uh, Montezuma tried to intimidate them, and uh, uh, it, 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 it's just an amazing story. Um, I, I, I'll just say the, the one work of art I've seen that gets pretty close to what it must have been like was the movie uh, Apocalypto, um, uh, made by, of all people, Mel Gibson. Um, anyway, it, it's not like the um, Aztecs invented human sacrifice. We know, we've talked about it. It goes uh, all the way back. Uh, to um, uh, perhaps the Olmecs, uh, but for sure the Mayans, for sure the Mayans. And here's a, a disturbing thing. So it comes forward to the Toltecs, and we know the Toltecs visited Mississippi, and lo and behold, there's uh, evidence uh, in the Mississippi mound of uh, mass sacrifice um, at, at uh, Cahokia. One, <laughs> one of the world heritage sites. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, and, and this was something even fairly uh, recent uh, that there was suspected uh, in the Mississippi culture, uh, there was suspected ongoing uh, human uh, sacrifice. Um, and it, it was, uh, uh, wasn't just, uh, uh, Mesoamerica um, and North America was also South America. There is evidence that the Incas uh, uh, practiced uh, sacrifice. And in fact, here's one of their um, weapons that they used to uh, kill the victims. So it made me think, that, ah, there's a lot of um, human sacrifice in the new world, uh, but huh, the more I thought about it, the more I realized hey, it's kind of universal. I don't know if you all remember reading this when you were a teenager. We had to read it in a lottery, the, the story of human sacrifice in uh, the Midwest. Um, uh, a very, a very disturbing story, um, but it, it, it's, it was everywhere. Um, uh, God bless Wikipedia, they have this whole uh, uh, table um, of uh, where it was uh, practiced. So I thought I'd take just a brief uh, moment. Uh, there's some speculation that the uh, Stonehenge uh, uh, human sacrifice was practiced. Um, it certainly came out of the Middle East, uh, Moloch, uh, a Phoenician uh, idol, um, expected uh, sacrifice. Um, and, and you get these disturbing images of uh, a Moloch uh, uh, and over and over again. And uh, also in India, uh, evidence, we'll get uh, to modern example of India, but also in the Bible, uh, the land of Canaan. Um, so they had uh, a god, um, uh, one of many, a goddess, um, who wanted human sacrifice. And th this has been studied. They've, they've found these uh, uh, jars, archaeological evidence, um, uh, different sites uh, where it was practiced in what we call the Holy Land uh, today. In uh, Babylonia, uh, there, there was a seal showing uh, uh, the process of uh, child sacrifice. Um, uh, Japan, uh, uh, it, 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 there's rumors that some of uh, uh, the structures in Japan uh, included a human uh, pillar. Um, and this is found in this legend, which I don't know uh, about uh, directly, but uh, Japanese society was not immune, apparently. Um, uh, the Druids um, uh, kind of fits their, their image. Um, uh, now let's get to uh, the, the Greeks, um, because there's going to be a way out of all this. 
um, in the, the Greek myths, um, there's this uh, character, Le Le Yerses, uh, and he was a bloodthirsty son of King Midas and, and Demeter, uh, the, the goddess of uh, uh, the harvest and fertility. So again, fertility. Uh, there's a link uh, uh, in, in the Greeks uh, between fertility and, and human sat, uh, sacrifice. And he's got to be uh, appeased, uh, propitiated, pacified. And he's always uh, challenging people at the uh, at harvest contest in the myth. Uh, and uh, uh, people wind up dying. Um, we saw a very disturbing version of uh, Medea made by uh, uh, Pasolini, and he wove in uh, the uh, human sacrifice uh, in, into the movie. Um, a, a victim is chosen at, at random, um, hoisted uh, uh, on a crucifix-like uh, apparatus uh, and sacrificed. Now, the way out of all this is, um, Homer. Homer finally tells the story about how Hercules um, uh, uh, enters the fray and uh, he, uh, his battle with uh, Laertides uh, symbolizes the abolition of uh, human sacrifice. Um, uh, and of course, as well as everything else in this, uh, uh, presages the, the axial uh, age, where um, most of the new world religions uh, uh, just outlawed human uh, sacrifice. Um, what's lacking in the new world is a world-class religion, right? There's nothing universal uh, that we've found uh, in, in, in the uh, new world. Um, so uh, this, for our culture, lingers in, until uh, the time of, of somewhere around the time of Homer. Um, so that was around 700 uh, uh, BCE. Um, uh, and we still, though, have the story of Ephigenia, um, who... Uh, the Agamemnon ships are uh, becalmed on the way to Troy to get his wife back. And he's uh, uh, told that he's got to sacrifice his uh, daughter. And then Aeolus will start blowing winds to take his ships to Troy. Uh, but good old um, uh, Artemis comes down and said, hey, why don't you sacrifice this stag uh, instead? Uh, so another Greek uh, 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 myth kind of addressing this issue of, of human sat, uh, uh, sacrifice to appease uh, 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 the gods. Um, the the, the uh, story of Ephigenia uh, is uh, all around. Uh, I think uh, uh, here's an, a, another uh, depiction. Uh, uh, and of course, in the Bible, we have the famous story of Abraham and uh, Isaac. And Abraham, for some reason, thinks he's got to sacrifice Isaac, which makes no sense unless you understand that human sacrifice was kind of universal uh, in extreme situations. But uh, uh, here, uh, instead of Artemis uh, coming down, we have uh, an angel of the Lord saying, hold on, hold on, uh, here's a sheep. Why don't you sacrifice the sheep in, in, instead? So Artemis came down with a, a, a deer, uh, and uh, the angel of the Lord comes down with, with a sheep and convinces Abraham that to gain God's favor, he really doesn't have to sacrifice someone he, he loves. Um, and, and, and it's the influence of uh, goddesses like this who were still um, around and in the ether and uh, uh, thinking people, making people think they had to, to gain favor and get out of a jam, they had to kill something they loved. 
Um, and uh, another version of, of that, uh, the, he actually drops, uh, grabs the, uh, the uh, angel drops the, grabs the hand and, and Abraham drops uh, the knife. So it's not a matter of convincing, it's a matter of physically taking the knife out, out of his hand and freeing um, uh, the people of the Bible from uh, human sacrifice. Other places, so the West has dealt, dealt with it in Greek myth and has eliminated in, in, in their, uh, uh, their religion. Um, but there are um, uh, other places that it's ongoing. But you'll see here the prohibition now in major uh, uh, religions, very explicit. And it's only has to be explicit because before the axial age, it was kind of common. Um, so let's, let's just look at other examples from other cultures. Even uh, in, in uh, modern uh, in India, uh, we get, get these thuggies that uh, kidnap people for human sacrifice on the road. But we can be smug, but we've had our own Charles Manson, we've had uh, uh, James Jones and the people's, uh, uh, Jim Jones and the people's temple. Um, the human sacrifice was encountered in the uh, uh, Polynesia. Uh, Captain Cook uh, uh, saw it in uh, Tahiti. Um, obviously in Africa, there's plenty of, of stories of uh, cannibals. Uh, Robinson Crusoe being uh, uh, one of them, that's uh, uh, a step further than just uh, human sac sacrifice to propitiate the gods. Then there's the, this whole idea of a retainer. A uh, retainer having to die um, when his master dies. And uh, this was really brought home to us in a, a Nigerian play that we saw, Death and the King's Horseman. And the, the British are saying the, the, the king, Nigerian king dies and they're fixing uh, to sacrifice his horseman because that's what you do in Nigeria. And this whole play uh, looks at a, a specific incident and uh, what the British are thinking from their uh, moral standpoint and what the Nigerians are thinking from their uh, moral uh, standpoint. Very thoughtful, uh, thoughtfully done. Uh, we know that retainers uh, uh, were put in the tombs with the pharaohs, so that, that's not news. Um, and we're all familiar with uh, the practice of suti um, if we saw around the world in 80 days, uh, we saw Shirley MacLaine uh, be rescued uh, from her obligation as uh, the wife of uh, a, a Hindu Brahmin to join her husband um, on the funeral pyre. Um, so uh, South America, I want to just move on. That's the end of... Um, uh, my uh, tangent on uh, human sacrifice in case we were feeling uh, uh, smug. Um, and on we go uh, to, to South America. I at least want to get started. I hope I can get begin in the, the Incas. You'll remember this map. Uh, the New World had uh, simple farming in, in green. And then uh, uh, complex farming and the, the opportunity for uh, civilization where you're building a surplus in, in all these places. So we've covered Mesoamerica and uh, uh, the, uh, the Aztec uh, wannabes. And now let's look at South America and we see that they reached uh, 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 critical mass, uh, economic uh, critical mass along the coast. Uh, along the West Coast. We see that that didn't happen on the East Coast. And we had a little chat about, well, why, how's come the East Coast uh, wasn't developed? Well, it was, it was just a, a matter of uh, inability to produce a, a surplus uh, uh, with their agriculture. Um, and uh, we've already talked about the musica uh, in, in case, uh, uh, Juan Jose is, is listening. I, this is a, a time I want to repeat it. Um, uh, 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 Colombia, 
is divided into uh, three parts by two mountain ranges. And uh, uh, the Musica were up in the highlands uh, here. Um, and they uh, produced exquisite uh, uh, gold pieces. Um, and uh, some of them have been recovered from the lake that Juan Jose discussed in his uh, show and tell when we did that round. Um, so uh, the Olmecs had writing, but there's no writing in the South. There is uh, uh, nothing uh, in the, the South comparable to any kind of written record. Um, the, uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, these people did produce a culture for sure. Uh, and this is how uh, the, uh, the early uh, uh, cultures along the coast are, are named. Um, I'm only gonna focus on a few. The Mochi um, uh, had uh, uh, influence in these centuries. Um, and there's a, 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 a Mochi River Valley uh, starting here at Tr Trujillo. Um, and there, uh, the uh, heads up later on, we're going to be talking about the Chimu who are, uh, succeed them uh, when the Mochi are, are done. There's different dates that are, are uh, listed. Um, uh, some when they lost their, the, the, uh, past their peak and some when they were totally conquered. So you get a little bit of disparity. And the other uh, thing I want to point out on this map is Kajamarka, Kajamarka, because something's going to happen there that's very similar to what just happened at Tenochtitlan. Um, so you'll see the striking similarities when Pizarro comes uh, with his men. Um, anyway, Mochi, uh, I, I, I've always uh, uh, in, uh, enjoyed the Mochi uh, uh, pottery uh, uh, in the pre-Columban uh, exhibitions we've, we've seen. Um, this one shows a real uh, uh, spirit and in, uh, a real individualistic uh, approach. Um, and uh, I don't want to leave anybody out, but elsewhere in the South, we're going to just be looking at the Mochi and um, another tribe in just a minute near Lake Titicaca. So the coast, uh, uh, the north uh, west coast and uh, Lake Titicaca are the areas I'm going to uh, be focusing on. But uh, elsewhere in the South, we've got these unbelievable phenomena that because there's, we have no writing, uh, we don't understand at all. So I'm not going to spend much time with it. They've also got uh, petroglyphs all around that certainly are trying to say something to us, but we don't know what it is. Uh, the Mochis. Um, uh, uh, successor were the Chimu, and they were up a little further in the, the Mochi River Valley, and they fell to the Incas um, in 1465. Uh, uh, they had an um, uh, incredible um, uh, architecture and uh, layout in their uh, uh, ruling uh, town uh, called Chan Chan. Um, but we just don't have time to cover all of them. But when the Incas got going, um, that was the uh, uh, second place they went to. So the orange is uh, the um, uh, Cusco, uh, where the Incas really uh, had their headquarters and started up. But their, their next phase of operation was to head north. Uh, because this was the, the other civilization that was active uh, at, at the time uh, at Chan Chan. Um, and uh, then later they go to the South. So I'm going to spend some time talking about the South in just a second. But these are the different leaders that conquered uh, uh, the North and what the, the time frames were as the Incan uh, Empire grew. 
Um, Patrick Cudi was uh, the, the founder, uh, the first uh, uh, successful uh, leader. And then we get uh, Tupac um, and the name Tupac Amaru. Now we can understand we've had a rap singer named Tupac. Uh, well, it comes from these two guys uh, here. Um, the South. So they, they, they finally uh, uh, turn their attention uh, to the South and well, they should, because that is probably where they, they uh, originally uh, came from and they moved North uh, to Cusco. So Lake Titicaca is a big deal because even though it's super high, um, uh, uh, 12,000, 13,000 feet, an island in the middle, uh, 14,000, which we hiked on, um, the uh, Isla del Sol, and you'll see why it was called Sol in just a second. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, this is where they, they, they came from, but there's another tribe that they've had to uh, share things with. And the predecessor here was, uh, uh, a, a culture called the T1 Aku. So, and, and it's spelled two different ways, which is uh, endlessly confusing. T1 Aku, but T1 Aku, and they built stuff. They built impressive uh, uh, stuff. Um, uh, they, they had statues that remind you of the uh, uh, Toltecs. Um, they uh, uh, built massive uh, uh, walls with reliefs in them. Um, and you can see that they're beginning to work the masonry uh, pretty well that's going to be perfected uh, by, by the uh, Incas. Um, uh, and this is, uh, they were also potters. And you can, this was found on a, an island in Lake Titicaca. So um, for them, Lake Titicaca had uh, religious uh, significance as it will for the uh, Incas. Um, also like the Mochi uh, individualistic uh, uh, faces. Um, so the other tribe that the Incas have to work with are the Amaras. Um, and uh, the language uh, Amara is what the Tiwanaku spoke. So, and here's a mapping of uh, uh, Amara language. Um, uh, and you see that it heads south from uh, Peru into Bolivia. And in fact, the socialist leader of Bolivia, ex-socialist leader who's making some moves to get back in after 12 years, I think, um, is Evo uh, Morales. He is uh, a Mara uh, Indian. Um, and the uh, Amara's language goes way down, way down, splattered all around uh, Bolivia and wraps itself around Lake Titicaca. So Lake Titicaca is really the boundary between the Inca and the, the Amaro. Um, and uh, uh, the Incans speak uh, Quechua. Uh, and Quechua and Amaro overlap a lot, just like the Inca and the Amara overlap a lot in many ways, uh, but particularly the vocabulary. So they're, they're different enough, they're not mutually intelligible, but there's enough similarity. We can think of some of our Indo-European languages where that's, that's true. Um, it's enough of a similarity to know that they're related. Um, and so Quechua, uh, uh, they uh, have and, and conceive of themselves as uh, governing over four branches. So this is the northern north coast west coast branch, um, and uh, it extends down into uh, the Amara uh, area. Uh, and the uh, uh, name for the Inca uh, Empire was Tawantinsuyu, 
Tawantan Suyu, which in uh, Quechua means four parts uh, together. So this was their secret uh, weapon for building an empire is they had um, uh, islands uh, where their language was spoken and they could uh, tie it uh, all together with these uh, four parts. Um, so in a hundred years until Pizarro uh, conquered them, uh, they uh, used conquest and peaceful assimilation to build an, uh, an empire comparable in size to some old world empires, but not Rome, not that big, but like Rome in that they used peaceful assimilation to build uh, uh, and hold together an empire. In contrast to the Greeks, the Greeks never tried peaceful assimilation. They were just uh, ruthless uh, occupiers and uh, colonists, but not so the, the Romans and not, not so uh, uh, the Incas. Um, and uh, that's in contrast to the Aztecs. Sure, they had to fight a lot of uh, uh, people, including the Mapuches who are uh, sort of like the Comanches on our Great Plains, they are uh, really hard-nosed uh, 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 fighters. Uh, they're the master of their plains. So uh, uh, the Comanches, once they got the horse and guns in particular, became master of, of the, the plains. Uh, so you, you, you give nomads some planes and, and they can uh, figure out a way to, to, to conquer and, and hold it. Uh, so it wasn't easy, but the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Incas defeated them. They built 3,000 uh, miles of uh, roads. Um, they uh, like the Romans, but not the Greeks. Their architecture, their metallurgy was superior to anything the Aztecs did. Uh, uh, and well, let me just uh, name, a, a look at a few of these names, how far their road system uh, uh, reached up to Quito uh, in, in Ecuador. Here's Cajamarca uh, uh, again, Chan Chan. Uh, the, the city that they uh, they conquered from the the Chimu, uh, Machu Picchu, familiar uh, familiar uh, names, Lake Titicaca, uh, La Paz. So their influence went all the way down to, into Amar, uh, Amara uh, uh, Company, and notice uh, Santiago um, is is on the map. It had obviously a different name. Um, this is something we saw that um, really impressed us about the centralized bureaucracy of the Incas. This is a, an a agriculture experiment farm uh, where they built uh, in, in circle fashion intentionally to catch the different angles of the sun on um, uh, every surface and they experimented to see uh, what angle of the, with the sun plants grew best. Um, unbelievable. Uh, we, just, we were taken here on a bike ride. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, and, and obviously the other thing they did in agriculture was um, irrigation. Uh, as I said before, they, they practiced assimilation of conquered uh, people, and uh, particularly the Aymara and, the, and the, the Mochi. Now, unlike the Aztecs, they did not uh, uh, demand and rely on uh, tribute. No, they just said, you have to contribute a certain amount of work. Um, uh, and this is a little bit like the Egyptians uh, at, the, at the end of the uh, planting seasons. I think there were three seasons because of the fertility of the Nile. But there was a, a, a downtime uh, when farmers in, instead went to work in Egypt, and it was the same uh, uh, in, in the uh, Incas, not tribute. Um, and the, the other innovation with them is they had a foot plow, uh, plow 
they didn't have domesticated animals to pull uh, what we call a, a plow. They had llamas, but that was it. And the llamas really didn't do much uh, heavy uh, labor. So uh, they, they uh, had metallurgy and enough uh, 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 know-how to uh, use a foot plow and a plant what uh, 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 Michael Pollan would define as, as uh, being organic. Uh, uh, plowing up the land causes uh, erosion and it's unnecessary. And uh, if, if you can uh, figure out a, a, a way to plant this way and, and uh, 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 take into account the weeds, you're, you're much more organic and uh, in harmony with nature. Um, they, they had the pickaxe, they had better, uh, be, better bronze uh, than, than uh, uh, Central um, America, uh, and it could be used as a weapon, whereas you'll, you'll recall uh, uh, the Aztecs couldn't uh, uh, use the bronze that they made uh, as uh, uh, a weapon. Um, and of course, they had cocoa. Um, and wherever people are, they look for uh, a way to uh, uh, influence their nervous system as to make life more uh, tolerable and pleasurable. And uh, cocoa leaves is certainly uh, one of them. Uh, Morales um, was, uh, got his start as a union uh, leader for cocoa farmers. Uh, and when we stayed in the, the hotel in uh, Cusco, there were pots of cocoa tea, uh, which we were told would be good for any altitude sickness uh, uh, we, we might be feeling. They had a, a, in La Paz, a, a cocoa uh, museum, uh, which we spent a couple of uh, hours in uh, learning about all the claims, uh, some of them uh, dubious, um, uh, that uh, were made for cocoa. So it, it's almost a, um, a, a sacred plant. Uh, and we have to take that in, into account when we're dealing uh, with our drug policy. Um, so this is uh, uh, the um, a slide I was talking about earlier, where you're going to get a chance uh, uh, to uh, decide in your own mind whether uh, this is a utopia uh, or, or whether this is a tyranny. They operated without money and without markets. Uh, the economy was based on reciprocity between individuals and the various groups. The base of it was the, the, uh, the labor levy, the obligation everybody had to, to uh, work for the common good, uh, building irrigation or ter uh, terraces for their rocky uh, terrain, finding the right angle to the sun in which to plant. Uh, the state owned the means of production. Um, uh, 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 Marx thought that would, that would uh, uh, be a good idea for the people to own uh, the means of uh, production, to not be uh, dependent on, on the markets and uh, the corruption of, of the markets and accumulation of uh, uh, wealth for ind individual uh, enjoyment. But it, well, the key thing was, uh, that the rulers had to grant fair access uh, to all of uh, the uh, fruits of, of the production. Uh, and they did uh, in good measure, uh, making sure everybody had food and drink for feasts. Um, and you know, it, all, it all depends on who you read, which uh, king it was. Uh, was it a socialist paradise or a socialist uh, tyranny? Uh, the Shining Path, they, they were still in their terrorist phase, but they had in mind um, a paradise, as, as did the Tupac Amaru. And Evo Morales probably has the most uh, socialistic, when he was in power, set up the most socialistic uh, uh, country and he he made a point of saying we have natural 
resources and the people own the natural resources. He was very reluctant to approve uh, contracts to, to foreign ener energy groups. And today, um, just uh, as of uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we have a socialist that is in power, uh, Pedro Castillo. I was saying earlier that he has uh, uh, made uh, steps to eliminate the uh, more extreme Marxists in, in his uh, group, um, but we'll, we'll see. And I was uh, comparing it a little bit to Lula uh, in Brazil, and Lula, it turns out, uh, did a pretty good job uh, with the uh, economy, steering uh, a, a, a middle path uh, between uh, uh, socialism and a free market. Um, so they didn't have writing, but they had uh, kipu. Um, and kipu is uh, keeping track of informa information by tying knots tying knots. So it's a little bit like the abacus that we've seen uh, use in the, um, uh, Asia. Um, the, the principles are, are the same. Uh, some of them can be quite uh, uh, beautiful and the colors maybe have meaning we don't know about because there was no written language. Some of them can be quite complex and some of it can be quite messy. <laughs> so it would take uh, a long time uh, to uh, translate uh, this book. Um, uh, weavers and cloth, um, they had llamas uh, and uh, uh, llama sweaters we know about, um, and uh, they, they, they were excellent weavers, but mostly in the service of, of royalty. Um, so the population estimates based on the uh, uh, economic, how many people could the economy sustain? If you, if you just play by the numbers, uh, this is uh, in thousands. So this uh, uh, Aztecs, 20, 21 million. If you look at the Incas, combine the highlands and the lowlands, they had 29 million. So by the numbers, maybe they were uh, a little bit more successful. Um, now, what did they believe? Um, and we got a little bit of a late start. I know that it's uh, uh, five, five minutes after the hour. Um, um, I need some guidance as to whether I should stop and we have a discussion. Uh, I can do this easily enough uh, next time. Um, uh, what's your- I'm good to stay. I, this is Irene, I'm good to stay. This is Carol, I'm good to stay. Okay, Shigeko? Yeah, I could stay. Okay, I'll, I'll just keep going here and see if I can work in what they believed in their, their spiritual life. So it was mostly local animism, just like in uh, uh, Shinto in, in Japan. Uh, every community has uh, uh, their own uh, story uh, about a, a, a local landmark or a local god. And you certainly see that this in Asia. Uh, as well. But the uh, Incas, uh, and, and, uh, I don't know if you want to call this monotheism, uh, but uh, they certainly encourage sun worship. And we've seen that as well in the Mesoamerica with the, the, the Maya and the Aztec uh, sun worship. Um, and the uh, Incan king was called the Sapa Inca uh, or the son of the sun. So sound familiar, um, uh, the, the, the son of God um, uh, was, was the uh, uh, Inti, the Inca king. So what's their, their creation story? So this is the Inti. And, and because he's believed to be the son of God, people uh, uh, gave him a lot of uh, credibility. Their story was, that uh, the sun married the moon. Um, and the, uh, the moon was called Paca Mama, later known just as Mama. Um, and it looks like they're standing on uh, water. This is 
Lake Titicaca. So there's uh, Isla del Sol in Lake Titicaca, a day trip uh, from uh, a, a city in Bolivia named Copacabana. Uh, so we took a boat out to Isla de Sol and hiked up to 14,000 feet. Ico uh, chattering away with German women the whole time and me dragging my, my feet step by painful step. Um, they had kids um, and uh, they sent them down uh, to earth. And their kid is going to become the uh, first Inta, right? The, uh, the, the son of the god. And he's uh, like the Pharaoh in Egypt. Uh, he's going to hand off to the next Pharaoh who's a god. Um, and, and that's, that's the way it, it goes. So um, uh, he goes down with the, uh, uh, in this version, he's called Manco and she's called Mama. Uh, and uh, uh, they were born from the waters of uh, uh, Lake Titicaca and sent to earth by their father. Uh, now, one of their jobs was to find a holy city. Um, but first they had to teach the people how to farm. And so they're teaching them uh, uh, how to uh, farm uh, uh, by walking north of Titicaca into the fertile uh, uh, plains. And if you learn how to grow corn in this fertile plain north of Lake Titicaca, you're, you're gonna do all right. And once we've got the economy going, uh, well, let's, let's find a place to, to live. So what's the founding story of, of Cusco? Here's Lake Titicaca, where the creation uh, took place. Uh, and how do they find Lake uh, uh, Cusco? They walk uh, north, and they, they have a golden rod that they keep uh, testing the ground. Uh, and uh, when the earth uh, swallows this golden uh, rod, then uh, that's going to be where they're going to build uh, uh, their city. Uh, it doesn't have to be in the valley. It should be on the top of the hill, probably for defensive reasons in, that, in the real world. But they find, they keep testing. And the, what the, the uh, Incas believe is finally they thrust the golden rod into a hill uh, uh, at the top of Cusco and bingo, it, uh, the earth swallows it up. And so they build the temple of the sun um, in uh, Cusco. And you can see the stonework here is a step up from the stonework uh, that we saw uh, uh, with their predecessors. Uh, they take they take masonry to a new level. You can't even stick a piece of paper between the, any of these uh, uh, rocks. Um, and inside the the temple of the sun, um, uh, they they remember the golden rod, um, and so they uh, they they love gold. Um, as Pizarro uh, finds out uh, to their detriment. Um, and uh, then they build a, uh, an, an empire that's uh, uh, mutually re uh, respectful. Um, uh, each place uh, does what it does uh, best with reciprocal uh, trade, uh, very little money. Um, and this is what the uh, Incas believe happened. Um, they have uh, uh, Mama Konos, who are uh, like temple virgins in, in uh, Rome, chosen uh, women to serve the uh, Incan uh, nobility. The other thing they do is uh, when the uh, Inti dies, uh, they preserve him uh, in, in royal uh, mummies. Mummies are a big deal when you're traveling around. The, uh, the people are offering to show you mummies or sell you mummies. Um, uh, and it's not just Incan mummies. There are other cultures in uh, that part. 
of the world that 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 do uh, mummies. Um, anyway, uh, Machu Picchu, uh, 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 we all know. Uh, and uh, here we are at Machu Picchu. We with some uh, uh, girls uh, that we met down in uh, Aqua Caliente, which is at the base, and they all work in the. Uh, various uh, restaurants and ho hotels and Ico immediately bonded with them and we spent the whole day with them as they uh, explained they come up uh, periodically just to, to experience the amazing site so it's a free day so they went on the free day Sunday yeah yeah so if you want to just look at the numbers game how successful was uh, uh, the Americas compared to the other uh, civilizations at the time that we're looking at 1500 and I guess this is before they're decimated by smallpox and and other things so you know uh, China leads uh, 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 the top rank uh, India is is uh, uh, second um, but all these other areas of the old world are kind of puttering uh, behind. And if you total up the, the Americas, they're in the game. Uh, if you measure success by the number of people you can support. By the way, the uh, history of California says that the Bay Area had one of the densest Native American uh, populations in, in the New World. Why? Because of two things, acorns and uh, shellfish. So um, uh, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll save this uh, for next time. That's uh, uh, all of a sudden, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just mention Pizarro to dismiss him. The, 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 the story that I told about Tinoch Tietlin is just the same damn story in uh, uh, with the Incas. And what happens to uh, Atahualpa is what happened to uh, Montezuma. Um, and so uh, I'll stop now. Thank Can you, I... John. OK. Any questions? Yeah, I just have one. I need to say something. You know, uh, Abraham was told by God to sacrifice Isaac to see uh, how faithful he would be. And Abraham realized that God could raise Isaac from the dead. So he was willing to sacrifice him. And that's why the angel of the Lord intervened, because he passed God's test for faithfulness. Well, ah. well, well good. Ah. And, uh, well, God is known for testing all the time. Poor old, uh, what was his name? Job. Uh, Job. The Job. Yeah. The limit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just had to say that. <laughs> yeah, and, but, but the, the spirit of the story is still the same, that the, yes. nobody has to be sacrificed. No, I mean, but it wasn't for human sacrifice. It was to test his ability to follow God. Yeah. Yeah, but the, but the mode, I think that's what John's point was, is that the mode of proving your fealty changes after you say, okay, no more human sacrifice. Everybody, you know, the, all, all of the, this was really interesting information for me to know how widespread human sacrifice was, that that as a mechanism of showing loyalty. And that's- yeah, I was really surprised too. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'd like to point out, um, I can't remember the second fact, but the first fact is uh, that um, after Atahualpa, uh, was conquered by the uh, Spanish. Um, his, I can't, re I think he was his grandson, but it's interesting that he took on the name Manco because Manco was one of the, the children, you know, the original children. So Manco was the one who actually held off the Spanish uh, for quite a while and he flooded Oyan Taitambo, remember that? Because the horses couldn't get through, the Spanish horses couldn't get through the floods. And so he kept the Spanish 
uh, from going too far north. But then finally he did meet his end. Uh, the Spanish did conquer him. And then the other thing that I think is really interesting and it seems so astounding to me is Pizarro was 60 when he really? went yeah when he went into um Peru he wow. was old you, you know, <laughs> by those yep. standards and to be you know riding a horse and conquering you know much yeah. younger people it's, and mm -hmm. I guess to having guns helps <laughs> yeah oh. that's true <laughs> Well, the story of uh, 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 how uh, Alawalpa got captured, that happens in Karamanka, and that's even more dramatic than what happened in Tenochtitlan. Uh, Pizarro had 30 horsemen hidden away um, and uh, in stables surrounding the Zocalo. And they had arranged the meeting, hospitality being hospitality, you know, what, what's the harm of uh, exchanging diplomacy? Uh, but right in the middle of the confrontation in the, the, the Zocalo, uh, uh, Pizarro calls on the priest and the pr priest holds up the Bible, just like uh, the Bible was held up in Tenochtitlan. And uh, the interpreters say, okay, uh, you have to pledge uh, to follow uh, our, our Bible. And, and uh, uh, the uh, Atahualpa says, well, let me take a look. And he takes a look and, you know, nothing magic pops out. There's all this uh, strange scratching on the, on the pages. <laughs> and he throws it on the ground. And then Pizarro gives the signal. Uh, mind you, Atahualpa is supported by 6,000 men behind him, warriors, uh, uh, and his bodyguard. And Pizarro, uh, 60 though he may be, gives the signal, and the horses are released and come charging in to the Zocalo. And it's gun, germs, steel, and horses that that uh, that win the day against six thousand um, uh, soldiers, uh, and that all happened in in uh, uh, the northern uh, city of Caramarca. So, in that case, also, John, were the horses foreign to the local soldiers? They still had the fear factor on their side, right? And so, and also, it it seems to me if he could stable those horses in around the Zocalo, he had to have a lot of local uh, cooperation. Well, th this is the thing that both Pizarro and Cortez arrived at a time of um, uh, uh, civil strife. There was right. a, there was actually a civil war going on. And by then, this we're talking now uh, about 15 years late after uh, uh, Cortez. By this time, smallpox had made its way down into oh, the yeah. Inca, in the Inca Kingdom, okay. and so they were already uh, uh, suffering. Who knows how how many men and what condition they were in to fight? But yeah. there was civil war uh, going going on. Part of it was succession, but part of it was this plague that the gods, uh, the sun god, wasn't protecting them from. Right. Yes. There was no vaccine, so why didn't it affect the Spanish people? Well, see, the 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 thing is that uh, your uh, people on. Uh, Europe and Asia uh, had been living with their animals uh, for millennia, um, and the smallpox came uh, from animals. Uh, almost all our, our infectious diseases start uh, in, in animals, uh, measles uh, from cows. Um, and the, we had, because we were living with our animals and, and had 14 domesticated animals, we were constantly expo uh, exposed. So slowly over time, uh, we built up an immunity to these dis diseases that were all of a sudden new to the, the, the new world when um, uh, we, we arrived. Uh, we were we were carriers. We could uh, uh, live with them chronically. 
um, but uh, not not and, and I think measles killed just as many as uh, uh, smallpox did in the New World. Wow, wow. You know, it's amazing that um, that the uh, population of the the New World reached <laughs> as high as Europe, basically, on using the foot um, plow. I mean, the foot plow is pretty crude, and to be yeah. able to, to produce a surplus, and, and you know. Yeah. Oh, I forgot, I forgot to mention the potatoes. Uh, <laughs> How could you leave out the potatoes? I left out the, 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 the terracing. Uh, uh, there was uh, a lot of that agriculture and irrigation was for potatoes. Um, and so that that's a, a, a new world uh, invention as as well. Um, and so, yeah, it was it was corn, the three sisters that we talked about when we were talking about uh, the Mayans um, and that that whole agriculture spread all the way up to where we were in Tuba City. Um, but in in the south. Uh, it was corn, as we saw, uh, uh, but in addition, you had uh, uh, potatoes, and then you had the, uh, the cooperative irrigation of the land, which uh, they, they obviously have in, in Asia. Why Asia maybe is less individualistic, right? They have to cooperate to, uh, uh, with the water um, and irrigation for the rice. Well, maybe they kept that sense of cooperation when they went through the uh, Aleutians and came down to America. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Could be. I just, this, this is kind of um, slightly tangential, but a book that Carol gave me, I was reading it and there's a, a wonderful myth story about the, the native, the first nations uh, coming under a mile of ice to gain a foothold on the American continent. Huh. Just what, what, were, what were they escaping that they would be willing to go through a mile of ice? Lord knows what kind of starvation was going on in Siberia. Yeah, mm -hmm. must have been pretty bad. Well, yeah. you, you know, I mean, and, well, I mean, the story is told in terms of a tunnel under the ice. So not not that they were, you know, swimming for a mile, but perhaps in their canoes, they were going for a mile under the ice. The, wow. All of the glaciers in Alaskan history, native yeah. folklore. Yeah, well, you'll, you'll remember that one of the <laughs> one of the givens of this course discovered uh, quite early is human restlessness. Yeah. So uh, uh, Harari uh, in his book, Sapiens, talks about uh, re uh, restlessness. Um, the uh, sixth extinction, why, why are we in the Anthropocene and having an extinction? It's because humans are restless. They travel around the world. As soon as they can build ships, off they, off they go, uh, uh, accompanied by their rats, um, who uh, devastate uh, uh, wherever right. wherever they go? We saw the the the, the trade uh, um, always wanting something better. So your trade, you, people are constantly trading. We saw how uh, the uh, trade on the Silk Road uh, bought the Black Death to, uh, to to Europe, and we're restless. And now we're building huge airports and. Uh, China, uh, uh, millions of people leave Wuhan bef be before we realize that they're spreading an epidemic all around the world. We're restless. And I think that's almost a given. It's a, a trait. It's a built in. It's hardwired. Uh, uh, and so, uh, of, of course, people living in Siberia dreamt of something better. <laughs> oh, you're still recording. Should I stop? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it's been a very good discussion, and those yeah, are the, very those good. Are the people are lucky to still you record the discussions. Yeah, I, I I actually think of curiosity as the restlessness, 
Uh, and we are, we, I enjoy curiosity so much. It's like everything, balancing it out and context means everything about how I feel about different things. And yeah. So. Okay. Does anybody else have anything they want to say that'll live forever in this? Uh, yes. Uh, You're all brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right.